nobody is happy with this. And so that's why, in Rochdale, a constituency with 103,000 people in it, 30-odd thousand people turned out to vote. And that's why George Galloway can win that on 12,000 votes. About 10% of the people of Rochdale voted for George Galloway, and now he's their MP. Like, if just 10,000 people had just come out to vote extra, then George Galloway would have lost. Like, 10,000 of the English people in Rochdale, if they'd just come out to vote, then Galloway would have lost. They could have come out for reform, but they didn't. They could have come out for the Conservatives or Labour, but they didn't. The problem that we have in this country is one of political legitimacy. That's the issue. Neither the Labour Party nor the Conservative Party will have it. Labour will say, well, look at us in the polls. We've got a massive 500-seat majority or whatever they're going to have. And yet, it will be on the back of almost, well, who knows, possibly half the British electorate staying home because they don't approve of what's happening. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I've just played a clip from Carl Benjamin because this is very pertinent and this is something else that needs to be addressed. And what he's saying is right. I've actually said that, and I've got the bookmark in my Twitter, which I'll bring back up, that the upcoming election will be the lowest attended turnout ever in electoral history. There were many things that went wrong with Rochdale. Now, George Galloway, I've mentioned it in a, the stream where I was talking about with Richie Sunak's speech. George Galloway is a disgusting piece of shit. But he won, which Carl quite rightly said, not because he was the best candidate, because nobody else bothered to come out. And this is where we're going to have the problem. And this is where I say, you know, we've all got to stand together and we've all got to support each other because this is the problem. The local guy standing in Rochdale who just literally genuinely just wanted to fix Rochdale's potholes and look after community, which is what a local, you know, what it's supposed to be about, hardly got any votes. No one turned out. I think the population of Rochdale is over 100,000, but only about 40,000 people voted. And this is the problem. This is the big problem. We have an existential crisis because no one has anyone to vote for, or they're just, just that disillusioned with politics that they just don't care. And Labour will win the next election. And that will make us the days even darker. But they won't win because they're the best party. They won't win because people are fed up with the Conservatives. They'll win because the vast majority of people just won't turn up. Because we all look and we've got no one to vote for. You can't vote for reform. Reform are the establishment. The reform, very much like GB News, are controlled opposition. I know the guy in reform hardly got, he only got 2,000 votes. I mean, let's be honest, he was uh, kicked out of the Labour Party for sending inappropriate messages to a 17-year-old. So he wasn't exactly the greatest candidate to be standing there. But the intimidation worked. A small section of Muslims, uh, to which George Galloway very cleverly pandered to, because George Galloway, as I said in the previous videos, doesn't give a shit about anything other than George Galloway. He's a journeyman, he's an opportunist. And a, some, a small majority of Muslims voted for him, and because no one else turned out, he got in. And this is what's going to happen. He's already mentioned, well, I've got plenty of people who are going to stand up in all the Muslim areas. And that's the problem. I mean, Rochdale is still over 80% white. That they, they didn't turn up. They didn't vote. Because people are that disillusioned. Because there's no one with a backbone. There's no one standing up and saying what they want to hear. But the thing is, that's something else we need to do and get rid of politicians in what respect. We shouldn't have people who are 
like George Galloway did. Honestly, just saying what he, what, what peop, the people he's pandering to want to hear. What you want is a politician who will say, well, not even a politician, somebody who wants to stand to be a politician, who not only will say what you want to hear, but will actually do it when they get in power. Because some of the things that were severely lacking are politicians with bollocks. And I do mean bollocks. We need more men back in politics. I mean, Richie did his speech a couple of days ago. Now, by the time you've watched this. And Labour, oh, well, you know, it's the tweet's up now. Oh, there you go. It's, it's the Conservatives that are showing. Don't stand up. Even, look, the shit's hitting the fan. And this is the problem. This is what we've got to come up against, is the fact that nothing will get changed. You will not be able to sit down and have a social chit chat in the House of Commons because it is full of panderers and cowards and traitors. A chilling message from the Prime Minister. Well, yeah, it was. Because, um, for one, it told half-truths. But, I mean, this obsession with constantly mentoring, oh, well, from far-right extremists, what have they done? Oh, right, so far right are the problem. So we arrest and jail somebody for sticking stickers on stuff for two years. But we'll know nothing to thousands of people marching through the streets screaming death to the Jews, singing from the river to the sea. We will persecute a white guy for stickering, but we will not go and arrest the guys projecting to the rivers from the sea, free Palestine, on the side of Big Ben, when it is blatantly obvious, the police, you can see with the projector, and they did nothing. Yes, the far right of the problem. The far right of the problem because there's not enough of us to turn into fucking scapegoats. Some people have said, why don't certain Muslims speak out? One, they may be scared which I understand, uh, they're in a difficult position themselves, but the other thing is, to be fair, if they want to show that they want to integrate, they want to live here, they want to be part of this great society, they need to speak out, and I know it's hard. I mean, they're disowned by the community, they'll probably be attacked, but it's hard for a white guy like me to decide to stand up and say these things that I'm saying now. It is hard, but you have to accept the fact that you've got to say something. We can't... Uh, we can't stand any longer and ignore stuff. That person reverse off the drive, have been trying for ages. <laughs> um, so you've got to speak out. You've got to speak out. I know you'll be called Uncle Tom's. I mean, your uh, illustrious friend, Mr. Uh, Khan, has called you that. And I know, and I get it, and I understand the pressures. I understand that you would be in the same boat as me. Except, of course, for yourself as a Muslim, the problem is it's all about community, isn't it? And I know you would get ostracised from that community. But there are Muslims who have stood up and spoke, and they need to be more of you. The only way we're going to get out of this mess is standing together. With all the costs and risks associated with doing that. But we have a problem. We need to get rid of postal votes for a start off. Because postal votes are the way people steal elections. And a lot of George Galloway's votes were via postal votes because postal votes are the easiest thing to cheat on. Just ask um, Americans when they had their election stolen from them via postal votes, which I still maintain is why the coup was so virulent and so pushed as it was, because it made it quite easy to get rid of the one president, the one gentleman who went in charge, said he was going to do something, and for the rare occasions, whether you hate him or not, whether you, you know, don't like you for this, that and the other. The simple truth of the matter is, 
he did what he said he was going to do and he paid the price for it and even though they're trying so hard to do him for the courts it's failing the democrats are a bunch of scumbags the left waffer are a bunch of scumbags who will do whatever it takes to get what they want any case that's enough of this one i'm home and i'm really gonna have a cup of coffee keep myself awake if you enjoyed this you know what to do like share that's the most important thing share it get the message out show people that you're not alone i try to i, I give you my point of view as as it is i try to be as balanced as possible but it's difficult when you see so much injustice and unbalance and unfairness we need to speak out more but the one thing is the only way we're going to do this the only way we're going to get through this darkness because as carl quite rightly said at the moment we are on a path that has no light at the end of the tunnel the tunnel's just getting darker and darker and darker we are as a society collapsing you could just go walking around the streets and see it collapsing So why aren't we doing anything about it? Why are we not giving our, anyone the opportunity to walk off this path to a different path that may get a bit darker for a bit, but at the end of it, there is light at the tunnel and we will come through it. But at the moment, all I can see and a lot of people can see is this tunnel that's just getting darker and darker and darker. And then when we go into the pitch black, that's when the terror arrives and that's when the evil arrives at the moment it's closing in and we, we all we all don't like it we're all unhappy we all don't want this we all don't want to feel like this but no one is doing anything about it now some people will say oh yeah but you could just sit on the end of a camera and talking about it you don't, yeah i am but the thing is when the time comes if i'm asked to i will stand and defend this country to the death if the time comes and the finances are there, I'm prepared to stand. And I mean it. I'm, I'm prepared to take that mantle on. Because it will get to a stage where, and this is another fearful thing that I have, is we will get to the stage where we're so desperate for something that will cling on to anything and as i said in the other you know in, in the previous live streams and i'll say till i'm blue in the face yes there are far left yes there is islamists yes there are problems and yes we need to readjust the balance but we do not want to go too far the other way because that isn't good either yes there is the ultra far right not the far right that everybody calls far right because it's just a thing to blame even though they've got no evidence nothing there nothing to see but there are the really really bad people the one thing that richie sunak did say quite correctly is this oh well not the far right but the ultra far right and the ultra far left and the Israelists are the same sides of the same coin different sides of the same coin sorry and it's not going to solve anything because if we go too far the other way then we all have to look at germany back in the 30s and see how that goes done that's enough for this one right then as i was saying before before i go off on that tangent no script guys you know that for me now there's no script everything comes off there uh, and i sometimes go off at tangents and that is the way i am um as somebody quite rightly say in the uh, culture council and if you're not watched them watch them there, there, there was a great podcast i had a great time it was a wonderful bunch of people you should go and see them uh, also past 49 uh, reverend si uh, simon sideways uh, angry bootneck all these people but we've you know i will give you my opinion whether you like it or not now the comment section is open for all of you down the bottom i'm not deleting comments i know a lot of people think i am i'm not i'm just leaving them I'm not going to respond to all of you, but it's not me who's doing the deleting because I don't want to. It's there for you to let me know what you feel. If you think I'm a twat, fine. If you think you're yeah, on this, that, and the other, fine. Yeah, that's absolutely cool. 
You tell me when I'm right, when I'm wrong, whatever. Let's have that conversation floating in there, yeah? Which it's not a bother, okay? I'm not the one deleting comments. The only comments I will delete eventually are if we get death threats. But if you do send things like that, and you are sending like that, before I delete that comment, I am going to let the world know. I will put it out there in a video, and I'll name you. Although it's quite funny that an awful lot of the people who send me messages are user and then it's random string of numbers who have no subscribers and have only just recently joined YouTube. But other than that, call me what you want. Say what you want. I'm not deleting the comment section. I will answer some when I get the chance because I get a lot of comments now. So it's there for you. Just knock yourselves out. If you enjoy what you see and you agree with me, feel free to subscribe. I've broke a thousand subscribers, which is a good thing. It's a great thing because that means now I'm sort of in the top. It's only 8%, only eight, around 8%, 8.2% of people have broke a thousand subscribers. So, you know, it's an upper echelon. And the advantage is it means the message gets out to more people. And that's all down to you wonderful people for subscribing and for your comments and for your, and for your likes and for your sharing. All this... Is wonderful for the algorithm. Some people have a good thing slagging me down. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to delete comments. That's another reason going off on a tangent. I'm not going to delete a comment. It's all engagement. The more you engage with me on these comments and this and the other, the more YouTube goes, oh, he's, he's you know, quite popular, as in he's getting a lot of engagement. He's getting a lot of interaction. So you're helping the channel. Why am I going to delete that? Because you are. Whether you like it or not, watching and commenting, whether you want to call me everything under the sun, is engagement and it helps. It genuinely does. So thank you to everyone. Right, that's enough now. Genuinely, got to go in. Desperate for that cup of coffee. So, until the next one.